the man to beat me haven't been born yet. Muhammad Ali is one of the best boxers in the history of boxing. His career was full of various events, among which were both rapid rises and deafening falls. He was not as spectacular a knockout as Tyson, but he put a lot of tough guys on the floor of the ring in his career. Because Ali's boxing career consists practically of only victories, there are a lot of knockout victories among them as well. In this video, we've collected all of Muhammad's knockouts, from the very first to the most recent. So sit back and watch until the end. At the same time, think about which knockout in Ali's career was the coolest. Unfortunately, we could not find the video of the first knockouts because of their age and the low status of the fight. The first knockout we will show you were in the sixth professional fight of Cassius Clay, his name at the time. By that time, our hero had won all five fights, three of them by KO. The sixth fight, which took place on April 19, 1961, was against Lamar Clark. Cassius took him down already in the second round. The next knockout didn't happen until the ninth fight. His opponent was Alex Mitif of Armenia, and the result was a technical knockout in round six. The following fights of Clay were all KOs. This time, it was unlucky for the German Willy Besmanov, who fought bravely but lost by TKO in the seventh. The referee rushed him, and Clay's opponent was ready to continue the fight. The eleventh fight of Cassius Clay, again by TKO, his opponent, Sonny Banks, was a middle-ranked boxer who did not hold out against the would-be champion in the four rounds. And yet the referee, it seems to me, was in a hurry. Clay's opponent was ready to continue the duel. It seems that our hero made it his mission to finish his fights in the fourth round. Otherwise, how do you explain two more consecutive technical knockouts in this round against Don Warner and George Logan? Unfortunately, I couldn't find the video of those fights. In his 14th fight, Billy Daniels was defeated. The referee stopped the fight quite unexpectedly, and the audience was unhappy. This was Cash's sixth consecutive technical knockout, only this time in the seventh instead of his favorite fourth round. The next fight was with Alejandro Lavarante. Cassius knocked out his opponent in the fifth round, but you can't watch that knockout for the same reasons. Gradually, Cassius became more and more famous, and his opponents became more and more serious. This time around, Clay fought the legendary Archie Moore. However, the boxing legend who came to this fight only for the money was almost 49 years old at the time. Naturally, he had little chance against the fast young Clay. Cassius had predicted his victory in the fourth round, and he made sure it had come true. The former champion lost the fight by TKO. Moore is sent to the canvas again by a barrage of punches. Ripping punches by Cassius Clay, and it's all over. Clay wins by a fourth round knockout. Clay easily defeated his next opponent, Charlie Powell knocking him out in the third round in his home ring in Louisville. The following bouts were much more challenging. After his tough fight against Doug Jones, where the judges controversially gave the victory to Cassius, his next fight was no less difficult against Henry Cooper of Great Britain. The fight took place at Wembley and gathered an impressive crowd of 55,000. A few seconds before the bell in the fourth round, Cooper sent Clay into a hard knockdown. Clay's seconds went up for a ruse to get more time to recover. They tore Clay's glove in between rounds. 
Cooper opened up a severe dissection in the fifth round, and the referee stopped the fight. It's round five. And now he's slipping in, and I think this is it. The court, the towel has come in from Cooper's corner, and Tommy Little's looking at it. The next fight was the toughest of Cash's career, as he was to face world champion Sonny Liston. Very tricky left lead, left jab. They might be stopping it. That might be all, ladies and gentlemen. Get up there, Joe. Get up there. Get up in the ring. Without difficulty defeating Liston and becoming the new world champion, Cassius Clay joined the Nation of Islam. He took his new name, Muhammad Ali. In his second fight against Sonny Liston, Ali took out the mighty boxer suspiciously, doing it in the first round already, which caused controversy and conspiracies. However, for more details about these scandalous fights, see our video on our other channel. So Muhammad Ali became the champion of the world, even doubtfully but successfully defending his belt. His next opponent was Floyd Patterson, a very famous and strong boxer. Patterson then had 43 wins and 4 defeats, two of which were by the same Sonny Liston. Before the fight, Ali said that he was not going to knock out his opponent, but to declare Patterson for a long time before the eyes of the audience. And so it happened. Only in the 12th round did the champion begin to box at his full power, land a few accurate strong punches, and the referee stopped the fight, registering the technical knockout. The same Henry Cooper who sent Muhammad into a heavy knockdown at Wembley decided to try to do it again, only this time to finish the fight with a victory. It didn't work out. The 24-year-old Ali sent Cooper to a technical knockout in the sixth round. Although the fight was again stopped due to a cut on Cooper's body, Ali's victory was undeniable this time. Ali had his next fight again in London. He defended his title by defeating Brian London in three rounds. Muhammad ended the fight with spectacular punches, pinning London to the ropes. Ali moving in on London. A fuselage of punches by Muhammad Ali. London goes down. On September 10, 1966, the fight was held in Frankfurt, Germany, for the sixth defense of the title against local champion Carl Mildenberger. Muhammad won by TKO in the 12th round. Courage alone, Mildenberger is. Oh, my nose is bleeding. Straight right. Oh, Teddy Waltham is stopping this bout. It's a technical knockout. Two months later, Ali defended his world title for the seventh time against Cleveland Williams. The 27th victory for Muhammad ended with a technical knockout in the third round. Backing away, Roy hits him with a left to the face. Ali had his next fight against Zora Fawley. The champion easily defeated Fawley, who was not among the heavyweight division's elite. In front of the eyes of New Yorkers, Muhammad knocked out the challenger in the seventh round. We talked about Fawley's courage. The champion has plenty himself, there's no question about that. One, seven, eight, He's not. Oh, he gamely tried to get up. That fight was Ali's last before he was excommunicated from boxing. The next time he stepped into the ring was more than three years later. After such a long break, Ali lost his best form, so he was not given the most vigorous opponents at first. One of them was Oscar Bonavina. The fight was a mixed success for both fighters until, in round 15, Ali knocked out the Argentine. Bonavina could get up, but then fought twice more to the canvas, and the referee stopped the fight. Oh, that left floored him. It came from nowhere. First knockdown of the fight, he took the mandatory eight, and now Ali is behaving like the old Ali. If he goes down again, it's over. Ali is the knockout winner at two minutes 
and three. Ali received his first defeat in his career from Joe Frazier. Later, he fought with him two more times. We will cover these fights in a separate story on our channel. After losing clean to Frazier, ruining his excellent record of 31 wins without losses, Muhammad wanted to rehabilitate himself. The punching bag was supposed to be Jimmy Ellis, but the beating didn't happen. Ali defeated his opponent only in the final 12 rounds by TKO. He looks defenseless on the ropes. The referee may be deciding whether he's going to stop the fight. He is stopping the fight. His subsequent victory by TKO was against a pretty average fighter, Jurgen Blinn. The fight took place in Switzerland, but Ali put his opponent on the ring's canvas in the seventh round. Ali kept picking up wins, but not against the strongest opponents and not always convincingly. Two years later, Muhammad met again with Jerry Quarry, whom he fought right after his three-year downtime. Quarry lost again, seventh round, technical knockout. Ali's face there. Ah, Ali out to finish it. Yes, it was a last stand, I think. It was Quarry's last gallant effort. Referee must stop it. Yes, it's all over. His next opponent was much more serious, but not on the list of top fighters. His name was Alvin Lewis. Ali finished his 39th fight by TKO in the 11th round again. You may call the old Muhammad Ali, sprinkle it away there, really giving them the business. And it looks as though Eskin feels that that's enough. For the second time, after beating his boyhood idol Floyd Patterson, who, by the way, ended his career after this fight, Muhammad fought Bob Foster, knocking him out in eight rounds. The next knockout of Ali's career would be a long time away. Floor with Joe Frazier, of course, Henry Cooper left hooked him over in 1963. But he just crumbled there like a pack of cards, Foster. He's... Ali could not knock out his opponents in five fights in a row, among which was Muhammad's second career loss, the offender being Ken Norton. But Ali, in which almost no one believed, gave a crazy fight against the terrible and unbeaten George Foreman. By the eighth round, George lost his last strength, and Ali, right before the signal for the end of the round, made a right-left-right combination that shocked the young champion. He was on the ropes, then Muhammad made a precise attack that sent Foreman to the floor of the ring. It was a great fight. Another sneaky right hand. This time he worked over the shoulder. After the fight with Foreman, Ali was at the peak of fame. The newly minted world champion had his first title defense against Chuck Wetner. Even though Muhammad won, he sent his opponent to technical knockout in only 15 rounds. His next opponent was Ron Lyle, who was knocked out by TKO in round 11. After his third fight against Joe Frazier, Ali won. His new opponent was Jean-Pierre Koopman, and Ali handled him reasonably quickly, knocking him out in the fifth round. The last knockout of Muhammad Ali was carried out in his 54th fight. After this fight, the champion slowly gave up, even though he had won three more fights with a great effort. The last knockout was quite spectacular. In the fifth round, Richard Dunn fell. So let's enjoy the last knockout of the great boxer. At the end of his career, Ali had seriously messed up his stats, losing three fights out of four. Still, it doesn't change the fact that Muhammad is one of the greatest heavyweights ever. With 56 wins, 37 of them by KO, he proved it. And now a question, which of his knockouts did you like the most? We are waiting for your answer in the comments.